All right, welcome back, friends and neighbors. We are returning to the world of the IETF RFC. And the featured RFC is RFC 9457. And the title for this one is Problem Details for HTTP APIs, or Application Program Interfaces. And there's the uh, screenshot from the RFC itself. This is the HTML version. I've done uh, several of these videos with the text version, but I suppose since they're presenting it in HTML, we use that format too. And you can see that uh, this RFC obsolete 7807. And the way that uh, you would search for these kinds of things, is you just go to the IETF.org site and then just do a search in reverse order. And you can see that this dates from July 2023, and that's a hint as to why I decided to pick this strange, weird, I don't know why in the world we're doing 9457 RFC. But more on that in a second. You can see the abstract from down there. It says the document defines a problem detail to carry machine-readable details of errors in HTTP response content to avoid the need of a new error response format for HTTP APIs. We'll talk a little bit more about that in a second. But first, why in the world would we do this particular RFC? I mean, previously, I've been doing RFCs, you know, the, the ones that are the core internet protocols, the ones that we always use, you know, IP, TCP, UDP, uh, ICMP, and those all date from the 1980s and are in the range of the 700s or 800s. So why in the world did we make this jump to 9,000 and something? Well, first of all, I wanted to point out that, hey, look, they're still making RFCs. This is still an important part of what we do in networking. And you can see this one was July 2023. And when we were talking uh, in a previous video about collapsing all the TCP stuff, that was a very recent uh, RFC as well. Now, another reason is to sort of indicate just how many RFCs there are. There are thousands of RFCs. Now, the interesting part about that is that, you know, you, you use, even just viewing this video, lots and lots of standards, protocols, and these are governed by the standards from the uh, IEEE or the IETF. And there are thousands of these documents out there. Of those thousands, we only use a couple of dozen. But another really important reason why we might take a gander at recent standards is to get an idea of the language that they use and the, the tools that are used by researchers and modern standards production today. And so this refers to JSON and XML formats. These are really, really important ideas. And if you're not getting a feel for JSON or XML today, you might consider taking a look at that. Also HTTP, of course, but really HTML5, the current standard. Now, the other fun thing about this is that HTTP and a lot of standards today are designed to be human readable. That is to say, you look at the error codes and you sort of know what they're doing. But an HTTP API, that is some interface with a website or a client, gets a code back and sometimes it's not really helpful for the API itself and so that's the whole idea of this RFC. Okay, what is RFC 9457? Uh, so this document defines a problem detail to carry machine readable details of errors to avoid the need to define new error response formats for HTTP API. So the idea here is that we're going to stick in some data so that the APIs have a better handle on what's going on. And if you look at the HTTP RFC, which you could do because now we're so interested in RFCs, you could see that the HTTP RFC has a, a whole bunch of error codes. And these error codes, while the humans might know what to do with them, they're sort of broad and an API might go, great, thanks for that information, but I don't know what to do with that. And as mentioned previously, right, these are going to be in JSON or XML format. So if you're not taking a look at those formats in your career path, maybe you ought to take a peek and see what it actually means. Because we hear JSON formats being used all the time and XML formats being used all the time. And so it's really helpful to have a handle on that. And this is an example from the RFC. Consider a response indicating that a client's account doesn't have enough credit. So you go out to dinner and, right, you're instead of 
pulling out your wallet, uh, your purse, and, and pulling out actual cash, right? You're going to do this with some kind of, of app. But there's a problem when you go to pay. But all that the application knows is that the designer used a 403 code, forbidden status code, and that's it. But there's no real reason indicated as to why that 403 was generated. So the API specific problem details as to why the server refused the request, right? Why the server turned it down can be carried in a response instead of just this sort of generic thing. And the example is that the client didn't have enough money and this is going to trigger an automatic transfer of more credit into the account. So think about that for a second, right? You go to pay the bill and you don't have enough money and you're denied. But then in the background, we've got this maybe, maybe it works this way, right? You automatically transfer money into your account so you can now pay the bill. And so the problem details can contain other information such as the URI identifying the problem specific occurrence, the time Joe didn't have enough credit, which can be useful to support for forensic purposes, right? So it's a, the 403 is generated. Why was the 403 generated? Oh, the client didn't have enough money. And then in the investigation afterwards, we find out why. Now here's a couple of fun excerpts from the, the RFC. And I like to look at language used in the RFC because on one hand you kind of go, well, that'd be kind of cool. I'm out to dinner and, you know, automatically there's some funds transferred back and forth to help me, you know, save me from being embarrassed. All right, but if we think a little harder about this, and the designers of the RFC did, when an HTTP API needs to define a response that indicates a new error condition, right, it might be appropriate to do so by defining the new problem type, which is what you can do with this RFC. So that it's expandable. So the designers of the new problem types need to carefully take into account the security considerations, right? The risk of exposing attack vectors so what did you do by creating a new uh, definition? What did you do by creating some new information flow that an API can actually use and that can be understood instead of just the sort of broad category of the 403 example? So section five says, well, what are those security risks? What do we really want to think about? So the information that you're using, the information that you're asking for should be carefully vetted. In addition, when you get information back, you should carefully scrutinize that information. What did you just do maybe to the user or the system? So risks include leaking information that can be exploited to compromise the system, access to the system, or the privacy of users, right? You can sort of imagine that if we're going to link all these systems together, we're going to create new messages about what happened and do some forensic analysis on there later. There might be a little more exposure than we're comfortable with. So that was a quick look at RFC 9457, problem details for HTTP APIs. Not that this particular RFC has any real importance in your life directly. It's not how networks operate. But it, remember that I included it because, hey, there's a lot of RFCs out there, and we're jumping all the way to one that was created very, very recently. So welcome back to the world of the IETF RFC. I hope you feel invigorated. I feel invigorated. I'll include some links in the notes for this particular video. And as always, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Like and subscribe if I helped. And may your packets always reach their destinations.